Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyce and Grove, and today we're going to show you how we took a box from the craft store that looked like this and turned it into a box like this. Let's get into it. A friend of mine brought me this box that he had gotten at a local craft store and wanted me to cover it with decals as a gift for another friend. I figured the best way to do this is use the transfer technique. Okay, for this transfer technique, all you're going to need is an inkjet printer and some sticker paper or label paper. I got mine off of Amazon. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. You want to start by peeling the sticker or labels off of the paper, and then you want to put the paper in your printer with the slick side that the sticker was on so that that's the side that gets printed on. You also want to make sure that your image is reversed from how you want it to show up on your project because it's going to print out and then we're going to flip it over to put it on the project. Once your image is printed out, be very careful not to touch it because the ink actually doesn't absorb on this slick side. So it's just sitting there on the surface and it can smear really easily. Very carefully place the paper on whatever project you're working on and try not to move it as you gently smooth it out with your hands. Make sure that you apply plenty of pressure so that you really give the ink a chance to absorb into your project surface. Sometimes when you use this transfer technique, there'll be little blank spots on your project surface where the ink didn't completely absorb or touch the project surface. A fix I have found for this is taking some Q-tips and swiping the extra ink off of the paper and working it into those blank spots. Now we have found that this application works best on raw wood. I've tried it on wood that's already been sealed or stained or painted and the ink just kind of slides around because it really can't absorb into the wood any longer. Once the transfers were complete, I decided to try burning the surface of it a little bit. I don't know that I could consider this a full Shushugi bond method since I'm not charring the outside, I'm just singeing it slightly. When putting the torch to the box, I really wanted to concentrate on the corners and darken those and kind of let it lighten as it got towards the center parts. Once I got the surface to the point that I liked it, I used some 600 grit sandpaper to sand the surface really lightly and get rid of some of the char. Then I used some wet paper towels to wash it off. Afterwards, I taped off the box and spray painted just the inside edge. I don't need to spray paint the entire inside of the box since I will be filling it. Once the spray paint was dry, I went over the whole box with a couple coats of polyurethane. When everything was dry, it was time to begin the inside of the box. Since the box is so deep, I used some dense insulation foam to kind of fill it up a little bit. Then I went over that with EVA foam. The EVA foam that I am using is just some of those floor mats that you can pick up at the local hardware store. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. I use barges cement to glue in the EVA foam pads. Now this box is being made to hold a gift that is going to be a small revolver style gun. So what I wanted to do was cut out the shape of the gun in the EVA foam so that the gun would rest nicely in the box. Once I had my shape cut out in two pieces of EVA foam, I used barges cement to glue the two pieces together. Mm -hmm. 
Then I use my rotary tool with a sanding drum to go around the edges to smooth them out. I also wanted to put a nice bevel along the outside edge. Once I got it to a place I liked it, I used a lighter to clean up the edges. The lighter basically kind of melts the fine particles of the foam so that it tightens it up and makes it look a little bit more smooth. Once I finished shaping the piece to how I liked it, I used some barges cement to glue it in place. Once all the foam pieces were secured in place, it was just a matter of putting the box back together. Alright, our box transformation project is finished and I am super happy with how this came out. I gotta be honest, I was a little apprehensive because I've never done the transfer technique on so many surfaces or such large surfaces all at once. I wasn't sure how that was going to work out, but it really came out nice. Plus, I wasn't sure how the burning was going to react with the transfers, if it was going to burn it off or discolor it, but it actually aged it really nice so this looks like a legit time-worn box. Really happy with the finish here. As far as the inside, I had limited time with this project, so there was only so much I could do, but if I were to do it again, there's so many options here. You could make this top layer removable and have hidden storage underneath. You could make another cutout here to display something else, or put a plaque or the company's logo of whatever you decide to gift or display. There's just so many options here and it makes a great gift for someone or a great way to display an item that you have. All in all, this was a really fun project with a lot of fun experiments of trying new techniques and I'm definitely gonna do it again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. We have tons of other projects on our channel, so make sure to head over there, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And we would love to hear what you thought of this project in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe and have a great day.